In the context of post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder, uh, you've been conducting a study uh, uh, looking at uh, rituximab response. So you give patients rituximab, see how they respond, and that has an implication. Why were you interested in that and what were you doing? Well, I'm interested in the what you said, post-transplant lymphoproliferative. These are the lymphoma that arise in uh, three, five percent of cases uh, following solid organ transplant. And it's due to the immunosuppression that this patient needs to receive. So they have the risk of developing a sort of lymphoma. It's uh, a particular type of lymphoma. So we made a multi-center, a European study, and I participated with these studies. A German guy who is coordinating this study, a friend of mine, Ralph Trappe, and uh, absolutely we obtained uh, very important results uh, in this setting because once this uh, situation was uh, a very difficult, uh, a major problem in the solid organ transplant. Right, so you would use rituximab yeah, as we, a treatment we, we and then monitor how well the patients yeah. do with rituximab. What then? So, th those patients are responding to rituximab. Now we know that they do well and they do not deserve too much chemotherapy. Otherwise, patients who are not responding to rituximab may undergo chemotherapy and they have uh, uh, usually a very good outcome. Now how reliable is using that particular biomarker as an indication for stratifying your treatment? Yeah, uh, it's a, 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 a very general approach because uh, I have another presentation here at HASH, not in the post-transplant setting, in the normal, in the so-called de novo uh, lymphoma, the follicular lymphoma. And we saw that, unfortunately, a proportion, a small proportion of these patients do not respond at the initial treatment. But those who are uh, a good responder, they do extremely well. And in this particular type of uh, patients, which is the follicular lymphoma, those who are responding to the initial treatment, which is the majority of the patients, they do have 32 years of survival, which is quite similar to the uh, normal uh, uh, population. So I think that uh, for uh, all our patients, uh, we have to con continue in uh, evaluating the initial response. And uh, the initial response May, uh, may drive our uh, uh, subsequent uh, management of our patient and we can decide whether intensify the treatment or de-escalate the treatment. Right, so what is the brief clinical message for doctors coming out of this work? Well, uh, for both work, for both the PTLD study and for the other study in follicular lymphoma, the first message is that these patients, if they are correctly managed, if they receive the rituximab combined with the chemotherapy, they have a definitely uh, improved outcome compared to a few years ago. And most of these patients may experience a prolonged survival.